listening to the Mark Bradford Alchemy for Life podcast. Beware the dangers of plateaus. Also, how to spell them. Well, hey there. Welcome back. Do you know what a plateau is? A plateau is a flat, elevated landform that rises sharply above the surrounding area on at least one side. Plateaus occur on every continent and take up a third of the Earth's land. They are one of the four major landforms, along with mountains, plains, and hills. And that description has nothing to do with what I want to tell you today, except for the fact that it's a visual metaphor for what we're going to talk about. So when you are going towards a goal, or you're planning your life, or you're comparing your life to someone else's life, kind of picture it as sort of an uphill thing, right? I mean, sometimes you say it's an uphill battle, metaphor. Sometimes you say it's downhill from here, metaphor. So you're always kind of picturing going up and up and up and up, right? Raise your vibrations, everything's either up or down. So you're going up and you think to yourself, I'm going to climb this mountain called life, right? I don't want to just do the desert thing. And there are some people who do that. But if you're listening to this, there's at least a tiny piece of you that has a desire to kind of move up in some way, shape or form, or at least understand how things work in life. Like even if you think that you're rolling downhill and that basically death is gravity <laughs> and it's pulling you down, at least you're trying to have some sort of understanding, right? Well, how many times have you said, you know, if I could just get a really good job, then Da, da, da. If I could just meet someone who really just loved me the way I want to be loved, then everything would be okay. If I could just get that new house, the big house, then I would feel better about myself. Then I'd know that I was important. If I could get someone who's attractive to be with me, well, then I'd have the self-esteem. Well, then I would like myself because other people would like me. If I could just land a big enough gig, that would show me that I really am going to make it into the big time. Right? Those are all plateaus. We even do it with other people. We even say, if I could just have that thing that other guy has. See? That's why he's successful. If I could just have those things that I don't have, but he has, it's just clearly what explains why he's successful and he's happy and this and that and the other thing. So those are plateaus. They're metaphorical plateaus, but they're plateaus nonetheless. It's us climbing the mountain to do that thing to, to, to su succeed in life. But if we would just get to the plateau where we can rest. Oh my God, I'm going up the mountain. I get to the flat area. I stop. Ta-da! Everything's okay from now on. But if you look back in hindsight, you've already made it through plateaus. You've graduated various kinds of schools, each one getting more advanced than the next. You've had jobs, you've had better jobs, you've had relationships and so forth. But you never stopped. And if you did, then that was a problem. And in fact, that is a big problem in relationships, which is a different podcast than this one. If you work really hard to find someone and meet with them. And then you go, oh, I finally found someone and I have tricked them into loving me. And you just go, oh, I can't let it all hang out now. And again, I'm not, as, a, as an asterisk, I'm not saying that people don't become comfortable to a certain degree in a relationship because they should, because that's the way familiarity works, even though familiarity breeds contempt. Um, I'm saying that if you let it all hang out and you stop trying, well, yeah, then things are going to be a problem at the very least. So the same thing happens for everything else in your life that you're basing on finding the plateau. Now, as I usually do, I talk in confusing terms that, you know, essentially agree with the point and the counterpoint. So after saying all that, I'm going to say that plateaus aren't a bad thing and they're not because we need to have goals. We need to have mile markers we need to have lines that we draw to say well this is what i wanted you know this is the thing i wanted i mean when i was younger 
when I was younger, I was like, someday I'm going to live in a house where the garbage is part of the cabinet. Seriously, there won't be like a garbage just sitting there. Literally, the cabinet will roll out and that's where the garbage is. Someday I'll be rich enough to have that. Or someday I'll be able to afford a car with a sunroof. Can you imagine that? You open the thing up. This is actually before there were electronic sunroofs. So now, like, I have really hit the big time because I have a sunroof that's automatic and a moonroof, which took me a while to figure out what that was. So it's okay to have these things. It's okay to have these little motivations and to give yourself your own carrot, which we'll address in another podcast. But the danger of a plateau is that you essentially put all of your mental and emotional eggs in one basket. And you say, if I reach the plateau, then everything else will be okay. Again, let's flip back and forth so that you go crazy. On the positive side of that, yes, it is a big deal because it, it gets back to the whole concept of self-love, which is really confusing and not desirable for people like us who are like the type A mover shaker people who work really hard. We don't want to like tell everyone to go away and like give up, give ourselves self-love, which is an odd concept. We don't understand what that is. And that is your plateaus are sort of your version of self-love where you say, I'm going to give myself that thing and I can finally relax. That's okay. It's okay to give yourself that. And you should. What's not okay is to think that everything else stops. The earth stops rotating. Your life stops moving. You stop aging. You stop re responding emotionally to things. You no longer have stress. If you just have that car, if you just have that house, if you just have that person, if you just reach that goal. I mean, the, the news is rife with people who we all think are super successful. Everybody loves them. They have millions of fans. They're absolutely gorgeous. And, and they do something terrible one day to themselves because they're unhappy inside. Those people reach their plateaus too, but there was just something missing. As with many of my podcasts, I don't say, hey, X is bad, do Z. Uh-uh, we're humans, we have lots of options. So I'm not going to say plateaus are bad. I'm going to just make you aware of the dangers. And that's what I'm doing in this podcast, making you aware of the danger of having a plateau. So if you have set these goals for you that are plateaus and said, once I lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 100 pounds, 5 pounds, whatever, everything's going to be okay. Everything may not be okay. <laughs> Everything, some things may change. Your perception of yourself, which will then make other people's perception of you change, because that's the way it works, and we all know that. It's crazy. But you might start thinking of that next plateau, because that's what's going to happen. You'll get to that plateau, and then you'll go, well, what else is there? Okay, well, I guess I have to lose more weight. I guess I have to do this other thing. And then you forget about all the climbing in between because the climbing in between plateaus is where life happens. So let's do uh, let's do our quick mini homework as we usually do. So I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to pause this and then we're going to move forward. So the question is, and again, I'll ask you the question, then pause it, think about it as long as you need to, and then continue. What plateaus have you had in your life, whether they're future ones you're thinking about or plateaus you've thought about in the past that you may have reached. Alrighty then. Hey, that's a good job. I, I don't know how many people can find the pause button very easily. Sometimes you can't but on your podcast. But anyway, good job. So now that you now that you've thought of your plateaus, reflect on whether they were good or bad. Did they help you? Did they motivate you? And did you have that massive disappointment once you reached them? If you look at one of your very first plateaus. <laughs> Like the, like the garbage can that I told you. Did you realize that they were pretty minor? That they were like little tiny plateaus? Uh, it's a great thing. It's a great motivator. But it's not... And it is a, a sort of a rest stop. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with working your butt off to get a thing. Like a big house and a yard and this and that and the other thing. And then resting on your laurels for some time. And in fact, if you rest on your laurels for the rest of your life, I'm... Not going to fault you. There's nothing wrong with saying, I worked really hard so I could have this big house and I'm done. I worked really hard so I could find this, this beautiful person that will spend the rest of their life with me and I'll still be nice to them and I'll still take care of myself. And that's what I wanted and we're done. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you ask almost anyone 
who has ever put a huge amount of effort into a goal, they didn't stop there because they were, ooh, this is how this feels. Okay, then. And then they go on to do something else. That's kind of how I felt when I wrote my first book. I was like, I want to write a book. I need to write a book about this thing everyone keeps telling me to write about. And I didn't because there was another book that wanted to come out first. And then the sequel to that wanted to come out first. And then I wrote another book. And then I wrote the book I was supposed to. And then I said, we're done. And then I wrote two big, giant, epic novels. So if that happens to you, which it probably will, good for you. That's probably what will happen. So thank you, as always, for spending time with me. I really, really appreciate these 10 minutes and 35 seconds so far of time. And I will see you next time. Hey. Got some cool news for you. You know the Sword in the Sunflower's been out. It's only part one of an epic duet. The sequel and final conclusion is called Amira, and that is now released. The Sword in the Sunflower is also released on audiobook, which is available on many, many, many formats, including your local library. So check out an app called Hoopla. It's available for iPhone and Android and even Roku allows you to check out stuff from your library with just your library card, the way that you check out other things. So you can actually get the audiobook of The Sword in the Sunflower just by checking it out from the library. And check out Amira, which is now available on paperback and Kindle. And finally, in addition to that, the book called The Status Game 2 is actually available in libraries as well now as an audiobook. So check them all out. And let me know what you think of the Sword in the Sunflower and Amira. I'm, I'm quite pleased and proud of those. Thank you.